everyone is looking for love. And they're desperate to find it. We must show them love. We must introduce them to love, to Jesus. To Jesus. For this is true revival. Love is all they need. Everlasting love. Rise up and go and show them love. Revival love. Supernatural love. Jesus is love. love. Well, hello there. Today we're going to be talking about entrepreneurs. Why? Because God is pouring out fresh oil upon entrepreneurs. They're coming out of the woodwork. In fact, as you're watching, you might be stirred thinking, well, maybe I'm one. And maybe you are. And today I have a very special friend with me on the program, Terry Seacrest. It's awesome to have you here. I'm so thrilled. This is one of my favorite topics. I know because you are a successful entrepreneur. You've been an entrepreneur for over 35 years. In the last two years, you've visited over 14 nations, just building up people and just empowering people to be all that they can be in God. And you're in the top 1% of successful businesswomen wage earners in America. So that is that is huge. So you've got a lot to share with us and we're very excited to have you talking about how big is your wave. Yes. (laughs) Yes. You know you're known for your joy and uh, you have um, a few companies and and you're just I mean I know people that you've mentored in business and that you've raised up and that they are successful too because success propagate success yes and so once you have something to give you can reproduce that and you are so good at that and giving all your secrets but let's uh, talk about being an entrepreneur and I'd love for you to share with our audience how how did you fall into this whole you know business realm of being an entrepreneur oh good gracious all right that is a great story so it goes back many many years I am the youngest of five children, and my father and mother were both entrepreneurs. So when I was five, my dad came up with this grandiose idea to set a business up, a family business for the children. And we lived on a lake in a little tiny town with a very big lake in the Midwest. So dad set us up in business selling night crawlers, which are large worms, to fishermen. (laughs) And I was terrified, actually, of the whole situation. But the more I got into it, I realized, I loved being an entrepreneur because my brother and sisters and I each earned twelve dollars and fifty cents a month. Come on, so that means you know that means I could buy all the ice cream I wanted, you know, you know anything like that. And and the funny, the the biggest memory I have of that time, Patricia, is um, of course my father would purchase a lot of those, and then and then when it would rain in Iowa, he would get all of us out there with a flashlight. At, in the middle of the night, digging worms out. Them, I mean, right. it was just the craziest thing. But I knew at that moment that I wanted to be in business for myself. Wow, just from <laughs> childhood. But then there was um, a situation that happened in your life that kind of uh, forced you not only into the joy yeah. of being an entrepreneur, but yeah to make a living for your family. Yes. So tell us about that. Yes. um, I became a single mom many, many years ago, and it was a really difficult time, as you can imagine, on many levels. And by that time, I had fortunately started my first business, which was very small at the time. And when I started my first business, I got on my knees and I asked God to be my CEO. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I don't have a business degree. That's Mm -hmm. not what I studied in college. Um, I felt that I had a service and a product that the world really needed. And I said, Lord, will you not only be my CEO, but will you be my day-to-day business partner? And, um, And he was so faithful because if I would be quiet and listen, Oftentimes in the middle of the night, the Lord would give me a phenomenal business idea. And oftentimes when I shared it with my business partners, they thought I was crazy. They'd be like, Terry, that's extravagant. Like, Terry, you know, why would you want to do that? And then I would say, it's complicated. But the Lord provided for me to be able to not only take care of my children and raise them to pay cash 
for college educations, to pay cash for everything, to just live life on a cash basis. And wow. so that not only, what I want to acknowledge about that, Patricia, is the grace and mercy of yeah. God. Terry, this part of your testimony has always really touched me. And I especially want to just encourage those of you who are single moms or, you know, maybe you're living on your own and you don't have any support coming um, alongside of you and you wonder, how am I going to do this? God is a great provider. And when I first heard Terry's testimony about how faithful God was, there she was, you know, raising three children on, on her own. And how do, you, how do you do that? How do you stay at home to nurture them, especially in times of crisis as they're growing up and they need that stability, but still make a living for them? And God was faithful. And I just want to speak that into you, especially for those of you who are single moms or you're, you're living on your own and you have no one alongside to support, that God is so great, so big, and you can create something out of nothing. And in a way... That's what entrepreneurship is all about because entrepreneurs start with just the raw ground and away they go. They go plowing exactly. the ground. And I love this because I'm an entrepreneur too, so I love the pioneering aspect of exactly. it. Exactly, and you have been such a great role model to me. And if we think back to America, what made this country great? Exactly. It was the men and women that had a fabulous idea right. and they rolled up their sleeves and they went to work and they didn't quit. Yeah. And that's the America that yeah. we were given. That's the heritage we're given. Right. And you've been a tremendous role model for me, wow. Patricia. Well, thank so. you. Thank you. Well, when you talk about America, it's, it's really interesting also because nations actually have redemptive callings. And I do feel that one of the callings of the USA is entrepreneurship. Absolutely. And it's that risk-taking faith, yes. right? Yes. And that's what I love as one of the attributes of entrepreneurs is that faith element. We can do it. Everyone might say, no, you can't, just like what you experienced. But you say, no, I know that we can give this a try. And they're not afraid to fail. Yes. You know, you have to yes. be able to take yes. those risks. In some of the countries that I've been lecturing in the last two years, um, the, as you say, the, the fabric of that nation is not at all like that. It's, it's the fabric of, you know, let's get a good job with a company. Let's get a secure right. retirement. And, and they, when I would teach, they just couldn't understand yeah. at first, you know, right. what I was talking about. Um, but I love this, and I think it's time to yeah. get back to that because we need to be producing more products in our country. Amen. So. That's true. Terry, you are an author of many books, and on your website, uh, terrycrest.com, our viewers can find all kinds of information on entrepreneurship and on on how to groom yourself, on how to build a big wave yeah. of influence yeah. in your life. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you to go to Terry's website, find out more about her. She does all kinds of seminars and teachings on entrepreneurship and all kinds of different subjects. And so um, please check that out. But Terry, what are some of the attributes of an entrepreneur? What are some of the characteristics? That's of a an great question. So again, it's it's about freedom. You know, wanting to take an idea that's your own idea if, that the Lord gave you and build on that idea. And I tell people, listen, if you're in a job that you hate, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Get in touch with your passion. Yes. God put those passions in us from the yeah. time we were born. Yeah. And if you figure out what you're passionate about, you can turn it into a business. Right on. So one is passion. One, for sure, risk-taking. Yeah. Okay. Another one is um, if you have a dream, you have to have a team. You have to learn how to work with yeah. a team. And that doesn't come natural yeah. for us. Have yeah. you noticed that? It doesn't. People always say, well, Terry, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, does that mean you're a good leader? Sorry to say it doesn't because as Not a always, as, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as a leader, we are yeah. um, a little bit impatient and we can sometimes leave people in the dust. Right. Because it's like, guys, don't you understand? You know, this is a great idea. Don't right. you understand? So I was uh, a little bit impatient when I started and I had very few leadership qualities. The good news is these qualities can be taught. And if you apply yourself, that's another thing about being an entrepreneur. It really is the best personal development program we could ever have yes. in our life. 
my college did not prepare me for this. Right. I, I believe in college, but that did not prepare me. Mm -hmm. um, I dedicate a lot of hours every week, in fact, a minimum of an hour a day, I spend on personal development, reading books that can help me as an entrepreneur um, right. and, and as a leader. And so leaders are readers. Right. So I think that is a characteristic. We have to be teachable. Right. And then we have to have tenacity. Because, I, you know, I think it's, that that's a key, what you just yeah. said there about investing into who you are. Yeah. So you yeah. know that you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. So in order to excel and grow a bigger wave, a bigger wave of influence, you are sowing into your personal development. And you know, a lot of yeah. times, especially in the day that we're living in, there's such an entitlement mentality that you think, okay, I'll just be an entrepreneur. I'll get, just like Terry in the top 1% of wage earners in America for women, that's who I'm gonna be. But you know, it takes investment. Yeah into the core of who you are and to work on those things, to perfect the skills and to even learn through what doesn't work. Sometimes you can learn some of your greatest lessons by what doesn't work in your life. That's true. And can I share with you something that always just kind of, it just hurts my spirit when I hear it. A person will say, Terry, I'm going to try this. And right. if it works, then that'll be great. But if it doesn't work, then I'll then know it wasn't <laughs> yeah, I'll know it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. And I said, that's absolutely not true. Yeah. Because you don't try something, you do it. Yeah, you make it happen. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, so Another good. thing that I think is critical is to understand the three parts of success. Um, what is really interesting, let's just say you have a product that you're selling, some kind of a product. So that product knowledge and that business strategy yep. is one third of your success. Now, what are the other two thirds? So if you think of a pie cut mm -hmm. in three pieces, the second third is your mindset yeah. about success. Yeah. I have to honestly say that in the faith realm, Many people tell me, oh, yes, Terry, I believe in abundance. I believe in success. But their actions don't support that. Their actions support a real belief of lack. Maybe your grandparents so said true. to you, oh, you know, if you're a believer, you shouldn't be so wealthy. You know, those kinds of yeah. things. Wrong mindsets, lies. Yes, yes. absolute lies. And so um, I spend more time working with people when a company brings me in, right. a corporation. I work more, mostly with their mindset. Right. Then we work on the business strategy. And third are the leadership skills. Within go. that realm, we've got to understand really not only how to communicate, but how to connect with someone. Right on. Hey, we're gonna take a break right now, but when we come back, we're gonna talk about keys to success. Are you wanting to be an entrepreneur? Would you like to be a risk taker and see great things happen in and through your life? Well, we're gonna talk more about that right after this break. What was it like being mentored by Patricia King? We were in our first season of television, and I had just come out of Hollywood, so I was chock full of attitude and pretense and performance and striving, and like most people I know in Hollywood, deathly afraid that someone might discover that I really didn't know what I was doing. And she took me on a walk one day and basically said, you know, Shirley, I've noticed you're not the best producer for this job. <laughs> well, needless to say, my whole world unraveled and being the passionate person I am, I gave all sorts of reasons why and defenses and blames and shame and, and, and she just stood there smiling while, while I melted away. And then she said, well, are, are you done? And I just said, well, I don't know, am I? And she, she smiled and she said, you're not here because you're the slickest producer in the world. You're here because God called you to be here. This is God's plan for you. And because it's God's plan, no one's going to take your place. No one's going to abandon you. No one's going to fire you. All of the, the things that I was deathly afraid of, she just lifted them away. And she has this ability as a mentor 
because of those giftings of prophetic and love to guide a person into the revelation of who they really are in God's eyes. That day, I discovered how God saw me, how God had gifted me and had called me and had set me. But most of all, I discovered and really believed how much he loved me. And that is the gift Patricia King has. I highly recommend a mentorship with Patricia King. You will never be the same again. Terry, just before the break, we were talking about the importance of mindset, and oh my goodness, that is so vital that we yeah. are aligned properly with the truth. Yes. We can't exchange the truth for a lie. Yes. And if God says that we're an overcomer, we're an overcomer. Yeah. If God says that we are fruitful, we're fruitful. And so we can't exchange that truth for a lie. So why don't you talk a little bit more about the importance of mindset? Okay. You know, 3 John 1 and 2 is a great example. Beloved, I wish above all things, all things, that thou mayest prosper yep. and be in health, even as, as thy soul, soul prospers. prospers yeah. So if mm -hmm. our soul is our mind, our will, and mm -hmm. our emotions, these are the areas that we have to develop. We have to develop a positive mindset. We have to have strong, secure emotions. All of these areas, really it's our character development. Mm -hmm. So we've got to develop our character right along with, de with developing business. Yeah. Otherwise, if we reach success too quickly, yeah. then we're going to probably be like the person that won the lottery. Right. Now, as it, um, as it relates to the mindset... Let's just backtrack yeah. on that one a little yeah. bit. Okay, so the whole thing about the lottery, like the person who won the lottery, you, you alluded to that, and it is actually proven statistically that almost everyone who wins a lottery, this very quick elevation of financial substance in their hand, within three years, they are actually back to where they were or worse off than where they wow. were. Wow. And within three years. Wow. And that's statistics on that. And it's because they don't have the um, soul platform, the, the big enough wave, so yes. to speak, yes. to hold that level of, yes. of influence. Yes, that is phenomenal. So you've got to develop your character in all these areas while you are building your fi mm -hmm. financial structure. Now, if I ask a person, I'll, I'll just use you as an example, Patricia, on a scale of one to 10, mm -hmm. how do you see yourself as a businesswoman? Now, you will probably say a 10. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd say pretty close to I a 10. Know, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So when I ask my audiences that, it's interesting because a lot of people will say a six or a seven. Some people will say a two or a three. But it doesn't matter whatever you say. Let's just say a person says a seven. So sure. what happens is because they believe that they're a seven, there is an invisible lid on top of their mm -hmm. head at a seven. Right. And until you know through God's word, through prayer, through yeah. you know what you teach yourself, until you know that you're an eight, right. you can't go to an eight. You yeah. gotta get that lid yeah. off your head, which is the paradigm that you're believing. It's right. some kind of a paradigm that you're believing and get that off and move up. And so when you finally, now in my case, I, I really saw myself as a nine, mm -hmm. but I just was stuck for about three years. I was stuck mm -hmm. at a nine. So I just like, Lord, there, what is that? What is that one thing that's holding me back? Mm -hmm. And it was my leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And so I delved in and I spent, uh, invested a lot it. of money. Got a mentor. Uh, yes, yes, yes. To get that mindset to where I could I be. I love a that about you. I love well, I that love about learning. you. You have such a spirit of excellence and you just go for your full potential. And that's, if you're going to increase your wave of influence and effectiveness in the world, you're going to have to look at these, you know, things in your life that need to be brought up because they can be. They can be brought up to a higher level. You have not reached your full po po potential yet. And a lot of people feel that, well, you know, there's a lid. I mean, God will only let you go so far, and that's not true. No. You can go no. as far, as high, as big as you can, and you'll still never feel exactly. the full of your potential. We're created yes. in His image. His mm -hmm. image is limitless. There's Amen. no limits. Yes, no limits at all. And so we can just keep going. How important? 
important are mentors in the development of the entrepreneur? Thank you. Mentors are absolutely critical. And it's not something we really talk about a lot in America, because in America we talk a little bit more about, again, going to college, getting that degree, and so forth. But a mentor is someone that is going to mentor you in the area that you are passionate right. about, the area that you're going in. And they're in. more experienced than you. It, so. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, if I could just use one of my mentors as an example, John Maxwell. Right. I'm a certified John Maxwell coach. Right. John shared with us that in his personal life, he has five mentors. Yeah. We're talking about business mentors, yeah. spiritual mentors. Um, he has a health, health mentor. mentor. Sure. So maybe, maybe you only need one to start with. Maybe you right. say, you know, the most critical thing right now is my health. Well, then get a health mentor for 90 days yeah. to help you get back on the path. Exactly. And then you work up. It's critical. I, I think mentors are so important. And I hear all the time people say, if only I had a mentor, if only I had yeah. someone who could come alongside of me, cheer me on, help me get to the next level, train me, equip me. And so I feel that mentors are always important. And even when you get to a certain level, go on to the next one. And the next one yes. is how you get better. And it's so much fun going to a new level. And I'm just going to throw this in right now and take opportunity is that I'm just crazy about mentoring right now in all my life. And I know that you do too, um, you know, that we take people under our wing because we, we want to see them reach their highest potential. Yeah. So over the years, I've had the privilege of mentoring many people, uh, not only in their spiritual walk, but in their ministries and their businesses and that. And it's so fun to see them excel and soar and go beyond where, where they could ever dream, right? I mean, that is the goal of a mentor, to see the people they're mentoring go there. And so lately... I have been really engaging in this online mentorship. I know, and it's, it's just amazing how, you know, you can take a training with a whole group of people, give a training, and then daily through, through social media, be able to nurture that training into people so that they have transformation take place on the inside. So if you want more information on that, you can go to patriciakingmentor.com. I'd love to be able to mentor you. But... You have mentored many people in one of your companies that I know for sure. Uh, you are not just a person who just leaves someone who's starting up in business to just flounder. You mentor them. Well, you nurture yes, them. It's, Offer it's, them help. Offer them resource that they need. Yes, I try to mentor people 10% of the time. So whatever you know, hours a person watching the show, if you work a 40-hour week, right. try to mentor someone four hours, you know, a Beautiful. minimum of four hour, hours a week. And um, I just feel, Patricia, you and I as women of faith, the difference between just being an entrepreneur or being an entrepreneur of faith right. is we are help, we, our desire is to help people live Amen. a significant life. Amen. And create that wave of influence around the world. Now, it's not about us. It's about what can we do to affect the world. Amen. And, you know, when you have a strong core, because I think... The wave comes from the core, yes, okay? It's it just like it if you were to throw a pebble into yeah. a lake, yeah. from the point that yeah. that pebble goes in, it'll ripple out, right? So it's all about the core. So if you have a, a, a small pebble, it'll make a small ripple. If you have a big rock that That's you throw it in, it'll make a bigger wave, That's right? That's it. And so the bigger you are in your core, the more developed you are in your character, in your skills, as you've been speaking, the bigger your wave of influence, the bigger the wave of success is going to be. Everything starts inside mm -hmm. and works its way out. Everything. And so, again, with the help of the Lord, we are unstoppable. Amen. With the help of the Lord. And all things are possible. You have not tapped into the fullness of all that is possible to you yet. And I just want to see you go for that. And you you have walked it. You are doing it, not only in the area of, of entrepreneurship and, and business, but also in health, yeah. your health coach. And we're going to be talking about that in another program. Um, but it, it's just like life is fun for you. And I just want to talk about this for a moment. You're known as the joy, <laughs> the joy lady. I mean, you, you just live a joyful life. And 
Why is it that we don't see too much of that in these days? I mean, we so, see so many I people know. carrying yeah. the weight, but they're not yeah. often happy, right? Exactly. You know, I, I the thing that I've noticed is the difference between the word happiness and joy, whereas happiness is dependent on our circumstances. Right. We can be happy one day, down the next, but joy is knowing how much God loves us. Right. And Patricia, if you could have seen me in about eighth grade, I probably was about the ugliest person you've ever seen and never knew it till 20 years later when I would look at my photographs because my mother would say every morning, she'd say, Terry, you're so beautiful. Oh, that's so God awesome. made you special. And I was six feet tall and all the boys were down here. Yeah. I mean, I never could have a date or anything back, you know, in high school. No, I never had a date because I was taller than, but she'd say, God made you special. And, mm -hmm. and she would just talk about that, and I believed it. Wow. And so I, uh, well, those yeah. words paid off because you might not know this about Terry, but in her past, she was a high-end international model of a very, a very high-end model. And so your mother's words <laughs> went a long way. And the, there, there you go, the power of words, right? The power of they, words. And ask and you shall receive yeah. that your joy may yes, be full. Yes. His desire is for us to live in joy. Yeah. That's his desire. Yeah. Why don't you pray for our people right now? Oh, the joy yes. will fill them. And also, yeah. would you pray for those in our audience that are just really feeling called to entrepreneurship? Yes. Would you yes. pray yes. for the blessing of the Lord and for that yes. anointing to come upon them? So, Lord, we are so grateful that you created us in your image, in the image of God, to walk and live and be in joy. And, Father, I just ask that anyone right now listening to the sound of, of this uh, broadcast, Lord, would come to the knowledge that you created us for joy, whether we're working, whether with our family, whatever it is. And so we thank you, Lord, that this is coming down into our sphere of understanding. You, and I thank you, Father, that many listening today have that spirit of entrepreneurship and have a great idea. And also, Lord, I, I ask that you would bring in... Um, people that would encourage them from the north, the south, the east, and the west, that people would surround them and encourage them. And I pray that you would give them courage to step forth, to just take one Amen. step, one step into their destiny. Amen. Because there are inventions right now that you have, that you want on this earth that are being withheld just because people aren't signing up. And so I thank you, Lord, that you are breaking this loose. Amen and that your people are getting the vision even while they're sleeping and that we are going to be bringing businesses back into this nation of the United States amen. of America. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us on today's program. It's been awesome. And for those of you who are budding entrepreneurs, we proclaim and decree the success of the Lord over you. Go to terrysecrest.com for more information. And remember this. God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. We'll see you next time.